The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new? It hath been already of old time, which was before us. One thing that you learn when you study history is how oftentimes things will repeat. And if you really want to get into it, you look at 100-year cycles, 90 to 100-year cycles, it's almost the same things repeating. A very interesting phenomena there. And you say, well, is it the, the devil? Is, you know, he just doesn't, can't come up with anything original? Well, that could possibly be it. Or it could be that people are just that dumb that they forget in 90 years what happened in the past. But let me illustrate something here that's rather interesting. Let me show you how there's a cycle here and how it repeats itself. First, you start out with suffering. Has there been suffering in history? Yes. Is there suffering right now? Bear with me. Suffering leads to what? What do people want when they've gone through a lot of suffering? They want pleasure. I want to have some fun, just uh, go out and party a little bit. Why? Because they've suffered so much. But when they party too much, what does it lead to? Penalty. Got a little bit too drunk. Ate a little bit too much. Fornicated with the wrong people. Down through the situation there. So suffering leads to pleasure, which leads to penalty. Let me show you the Roman Catholic version of that. You have Lent, which is uh, 40 days. Certain uh, supposed Protestant author wrote 40 days of purpose, but no connection, I'm sure. Lent, which by the way, we're in right now. Rather interesting. Um, what comes after that? Easter, which your King James Bible condemns as a pagan holiday. The pagan King Herod celebrated Easter. He intended after Easter to bring Peter forth. He could have cared less about Passover. Okay, Pascha, the Greek word there, could be translated as either Easter or Passover, but you look at the context. Context is, one of, is how you determine how a word should be properly translated. The King James translators got it right. All the new versions that say Passover got it wrong. King James Bible rightly condemns Easter. It is a pagan holiday. It's not Christian. All right. Easter. And what do you have after that for the Catholics? Penance. Okay. And let me just give you a little history of this whole thing. Um, with this situation right here, Lent, it begins basically, excuse me, with Shrove Tuesday, where they go out and they eat pancakes, you know, the round pancakes that uh, somewhat look like the sun, kind of like the Eucharistic host. Study the, the history of that. But they have this big pancake supper. Shrove Tuesday, we got to have this big pancake supper. A lot of Protestants do it as well and have no idea why they're doing it or whatever. What comes next? Ash Wednesday. They make the mark upon the forehead. Mark upon the forehead. Hmm. Yeah. There's nothing in the Bible that condemns that. And then that begins Lent, which is 40 days. And like I said, it's going on right now as we speak. Remember that here with the next little comparison. After that, you have April 4th, Easter this year. 2021, April 4th is Easter. Okay? Easter Sunday. What do you do on Easter? You get candy. You celebrate uh, symbols of fertility like the rabbit. That's the, one of the fastest procreating animals on the earth. And the egg, symbolic of rebirth. Huh. Study some of the ancient pagan practices of, of uh, ritual fornication and things like that at Easter time. What is it? Well, I don't know. Pleasure. I remember being a boy and I'd get these big, the big Easter basket filled with all the candy and all kinds of stuff and just eating high fructose corn syrup, you know, junk 
and food coloring and whatever else, uh, jelly beans and, and marshmallow rabbits and chocolate, all kinds of things, and you end up getting sick. You know what I mean? Hey, I, I went through this 40 days of giving up cigarettes or giving up alcohol or whatever else as a Catholic. Easter time comes back and it's all oh, time to feast again. Let's have a good time. Oh, I went a little bit too far. I'll we'll have to go back in for confessional and do a little bit of penance. Hmm. Hmm. So what's this cycle I'm talking about? Here's where it gets interesting. How about a uh, pandemic? Which leads to the uh, roaring... 20s, which leads to a depression. Look at the 100 year cycle. What do we have here? The Spanish flu in the early 1900s, hmm. which just happened to really show up in the military. Um, which is kind of interesting because John D. Rockefeller um, with Standard Oil Company, uh, the you know, basically founder of the first man of the, the Rockefeller big empire thing, good personal friend of uh, Billy Sunday, look out for that, Billy Sunday um, promoting young men going into the war, huh, fighting for your God and your country, nothing to it there. And uh, John D. Rockefeller came out and he said, um, we need to vaccinate. I'm going to, I'm going to donate my money to vaccinate these, these young soldiers when they go into war, you know, and everything that they'll, they'll be ready, you know, in the, in the, those trenches and everything. We need to vaccinate them. And all of a sudden the soldiers are coming down with Spanish flu, just purely a coincidence. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but you have the Spanish flu and what do you have? Um, people wearing face masks required to wear face masks. Church is being shut down. Business is being shut down. Suffering? Hmm. How about that? Then you have the Roaring Twenties that they called the uh, Flapper era. When women started wearing pants and cutting their hair short. Women's suffrage. We're liberated modern women. This is a great thing. Hey, let it all hang out here. Let's go on out. Let's dance. Let's act wild and everything else. No restraints on the flesh. Then about 1929, stock market crashes. And all of a sudden, all the money and everything else goes bye-bye and the banks say, hey, we're really sorry about this, but you can't get your money out. Well, how long? Well, just a few days. We, we have some problems here and we need to kind of correct some things. And then it was a, well, a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And finally, sorry, run on the banks, the banks shut down or the ones that were still there. Well, we're still here. Your money's still in the bank. Trust us. It's still there. It's still fine, but you just can't get it out for five years. Do the research. It's what happened. Okay. Now, if, I, if you kind of look at this thing, you might think to yourself, you might almost be tempted to compare it to modern times. Um, maybe. I mean, there's not much going on today that would convince us that this cycle is repeating here 100 years later. I mean, barely anything. Uh, what are we at? Pandemic. What are, what's going on? People are suffering. They're having to give up certain things, you know, and uh, they're talking about easing some of the restrictions and things. Um, well, that'd be good, but what are people going to do? Are they going to say, well, thank you, Lord, that this deception is finally over? No, they're going to run out and uh, have some pleasure. Indulgence. Roaring 20s. Maybe now and this time, instead of the, the, you know, the women are already liberated, they already have, you know, short hair and pants and things and whatever else, which, you know, again, study it. it that's when it came in. Um, you can get mad at me and say, oh, you're, you're radical with your weird views and whatever. It's, it's history. It's science. 
Women wore dresses before that, and all of a sudden they wear pants, and they want to dress just like men and look like men and whatever else. That's when it happened. That's when it happened. Okay? <laughs> Don't get mad at me. It's science. All right? Um, so what's going to be the new Roaring Twenties, the new flapper era? Well, probably men dressing like women, I guess. You know, that, that'll be the new normal now. You know? <laughs> and, I mean, look at it. It's, it's already there. So I'm not just talking transgenderism and whatever else. I'm saying... It's this new, you know, gender neutral thing and, and whatever else. And if boys want to dress like girls, then that's fine. Uh, satanic is what it is. But that pleasure time leads to penalty. For the Catholics, it leads to penance. And for what's coming, we're going to be going into a, a depression. You see, I think, and without getting into some of the, the different stuff there and, and some of the things with the economy and how the different aspects of the stock market and the different indexes and all that stuff without getting into a big thing on it. Um, if people leave the pandemic time here and they go rushing out here and they party hardy, you know, and they get themselves into all kinds of new debt and whatever else, it's going to destroy the economy here in America, which is already just so fragile. It's being propped up all the time by the Federal Reserve and by the banks and things. It's the markets are so manipulated and whatever else. We're, we're just, we are teetering on the brink of total economic collapse. Now, this stuff happened over the course of quite a few years. I don't think it's going to take that long this time. I think that we are here in pandemic time, but when they release the people, the people are just going to go out and sin like they've never sinned before. And God at that point in time is going to say, okay, you had your chance to repent back here. You didn't take it. So guess what happens right here? God says, oh, okay, that's the way you're going to do it. You're not going to care. You're going to go out and seek pleasure and seek sin and everything else. Then you get this right there. It will come to pass. You want another sure word of prophecy? Right there you go. Right here. Sure word of prophecy. The thing it hath been, it's been of old. There's no new thing under the sun. Right there. We're going to see the cycle come right around again. And uh, when we get over here, it's going to be rough. It's going to be very rough. It's going to try your faith. All right? You better get ready for it because it's going to come. I do pray that uh, you really take this to heart and really think about this. Um, and don't get sucked into the whole thing when, it, when they finally say no more pandemic. The whole thing's over. Um, we've had enough people vaccinated and whatever else they try to do, whatever else they try to spin. And so we can now let go of it. It's going to go to this. People are going to rush out. They're going to spend, 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 get themselves into even more debt. And it's going to implode. And it's going to be a stock market crash that will be far worse than the first Great Depression. I do pray that you uh, put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, because quite frankly, he's the only one that's going to get you through this. If you're lost, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you better get saved. You better get right with God because it's going to be bad. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.